Hey everybody and welcome back to the third part of the Vent ATV lecture. Today we're going to answer the question, how can we use these non-invasively? And there are a bunch of cool ways that you could use your ventilator that might not be taught to you either in a normal ventilator class or even in the book that comes with the ventilator. So let's check out some stuff. We're going to answer some really cool questions today. So we got four little categories that we're going over. The first one is ventilator assisted BVM. And I called it that for a reason, and we'll get into another section where we use this for a little bit of a different reason, but I want you to not even read the slide. I want you to answer a question for me, and it's highlighted in red. It says, what patients have you seen on BiPAP and why? What patients have you brought into the ER, or you've been in the ER, you got this patient, and they order respiratory, and they say, we need to put this on BiPAP, this patient on BiPAP. One of the ones that really comes to mind is asthmatic patients. Asthmatic patients in the hospital are always put on BiPAP and not CPAP. Why is that? Why do they put them on BiPAP and not CPAP? Well, it's a lot easier to breathe on BiPAP. It's a lot less constricting because as you can see, there are two different levels of pressure. There's, if we look up here, IPAP, I, P, A, P, inspiratory positive airway pressure, and then there's EPAP, expiratory positive airway pressure, and those are two different levels of pressure. So they get the same effect from a CPAP, getting that big positive pressure uh, push inwards whenever you inhale, and then when you exhale, there's a little bit less of a positive, uh, of a positive pressure enabling you to exhale a lot easier. That's something that CPAP doesn't give you because remember CPAP is continuous positive airway pressure. It doesn't have those two levels. BiPAP, just like bicycle or bisexual, it's two. There are two different levels. So when you think about this, know that you can have an inspiratory pressure and an expiratory pressure. And that's why they like to give it to asthmatics because asthmatics are already have a hard time breathing outward and they need that help breathing inward. And the the main reason they need that help breathing inward, we'll actually get to a little bit later and I'll, and I'll show you, it's, it's very, very cool and not many people think about it. So what patients have you seen on BiPAP? Asthmatics, maybe some CHFers, and, and albeit with the CHFers, the, the CPAP will work just fine, but specifically how is CPAP different than BiPAP? Well, we went over that. There are two levels. It's not a continuous positive airway pressure like like CPAP. It's BiPAP. It's two levels of pressure that you can control, that you can di differentiate between, that you could say, okay, I want to put the, the high on seven and I'll put the low on five or I'll put the low on four. And it'll allow you to gauge whether it's being accepted a little bit easier by the patient. So how can we manipulate our ventilator to make a fake BiPAP? Because we can already, I mean, why would we want to do this in the first place? Why would I want to make a fake BiPAP out of my ATV ventilator? Well, you know, I really didn't come up with this idea on my own. It was actually speared off of, a, of another idea I learned on MCRIT. And the reason you would want to do that is because BiPAP is a lot more, is a lot well tolerated than CPAP on most asthmatics. I mean, if you if you have to de dealt with putting something on an asthmatic who already can't breathe, putting a BiPAP on them and letting them exhale properly is actually a, a lot easier for them to sort of handle. And what you're essentially doing is just making a BVM. That's all that you're doing is making a BVM and strapping it to their face. That that's You're making a BVM out of your ventilator and you're strapping it to their face. Because most ATVs, they don't have that that uh, pressure. They, they, they're they set solely on volume. They are not allowed to have those qualities of affecting bi or, uh, IPAP and EPAP. Those are mainly for the high octane ventilators, the, the LTVs and the, the really fancy ventilators, but not for the ATVs. So what you basically do is you set all of your settings to for a regular ventilator for a BV for a normal patient who's tubed and you put that pressure that pressure valve a little bit down put it all the way down because you don't want to expand their lung volume enough 
to where you're actually infiltrating their esophagus and you're going to expand their stomach with air. So what you do is you take that pressure alarm valve, you turn it all the way down. So that alarm valve alarms whenever you go past, I think the lowest is maybe 30 centimeters of water. And that'll alert you to say, hey, you're putting in too much pressure with inside this guy's uh, uh, oral cavity. And most of it is going into the esophagus, going past that cardiac sphincter, going into their, uh, into their stomach and insufflating the stomach. So that's essentially all it's doing. This entire idea is making a BVM out of your ventilator and strapping it to their face with a, seat, with a BiPAP. Now, is this warranted, uh, warranted by the ventilator company? Absolutely not. Was this picked up by our medical direction? You know what? No, it wasn't. They, and, and that's totally fine. They said that it was, you know, CPAP is good enough. We can deal with it just like that. But this actually gives you a good way to look at it and a good idea of what your machinery can do around you to better suit your patient. So uh, I don't uh, want you guys to go out and, you know, just start putting this on patients. I want you to sort of think about it, do some research on BiPAP, look it up, look at up the, the statistics on CPAP and understand why you would want to change this stuff around and see if you can. So I, I used two resources, not only MCRIT, but also the uh, Harrison Principles Guides of Internal Medicine that I, that I got a long time ago. It's this great book. And also, I need to plug this guy. He's a, an amazing, an amazing, amazing teacher. He's the Ancient Scholar. And his YouTube channel, the, the link you can actually click below. And he's just one of the uh, smartest medics. He was actually one of the, one of the teachers... Uh, when I was first going through paramedic school, so I, I really want to plug him. But let's move on. We're gonna we're gonna move on to this next segment and uh, sort of answer some more questions. Because here's something else that you can actually do that was actually uh, warranted that our medical direction wanted us to do, and we called it the VVM instead of the BB the BVM. So the bag valve mask to the vent valve mask. Now the only difference that this has between the fake BiPAP is the strap that's strapped to their face. And for good reason. How do we want to use this? What, why would we want to use this? Well, anybody who's frankly unconscious. You know, you have a narc overdose that you want to try to bag, that you, it's only you and your partner, your partner's trying to get a line, put them on this, put them on that. Put them on the, the vent valve mask, put it to all the regular settings that you would for a regular intubated patient and then put that pressure alarm valve all the way down so it's extremely sensitive so it knows when you are putting in too much pressure what's inside their thorax so you don't inflate their stomach, make them aspirate. That's the whole reason you do that. So what patient population can we use this entire thing in? Well, anybody who's unconscious, anybody who, who you would ever bag, if you think about breaking out the bag, break out the vent valve mask. It gives you perfect breaths, uh, at a well-timed rate, you aren't, you know, the cop or the firefighter, the, e the new EMT who's bagging away on this patient because you're a little upped and amped. You could just give it to the EMT, the firefighter, the, the paramedic, the whoever is at the head. Have them hold a proper seal and the vent will do the rest of the work. That's the whole reason we want to do that. So the, how would you do this? You break out the vent, break out the circuit, and get a BVM uh, a mask. That's it. You just get the mask at the end, hook it onto there, put it on their face, and you're golden. Can we use this in CPR? No, we can't. If you're using, if, if you're in a CPR situation and you need to bag, remember, it's 30 to 2 breaths, 30 compressions to 2 breaths, and we can't really use this in that scenario. What you can do, put an NRB on them, put an end title CO2, Put uh, just high full oxygen and while they're compressing, after you put your two breaths in, then just use a normal BVM. But you can't use a VVM when you do CPR. Remember that you could do this in any population that you would use a bag valve mask in, a normal BVM. And this was uh, actually, I, I've used this a couple times and I, I think it works great. MCRIT has an excellent video on how to do this. Go over there and check it out. And we'll go back for the part four, or we'll be back for the part four of this second segment really soon. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you on the next one.